Welcome to SciTech Culture with Steve Kern and Ben Warner, where we examine science, technology, and culture in the 21st century. Visit our website at scitechculture.com. Hello and welcome to SciTech Culture. My name's Ben Warner and I'm joined by Steve Kern. Today, we're both together in the same spot for our um, uh, traditional <laughs> yearly wrap-up, the last episode of the year, 2019 and, and whatnot. Got a few things to cover. We'll have a look at some of the apps that we uh, did this year and some of the things we talked about. And I'm no doubt we're going to be um, talking about them again next year, probably. Um, but uh, perhaps we'll start with um, uh, the Star Wars review. We did one yes. two years ago, as you recall, we on did. the last film. We did. Um, so the Rise of Skywalker's out. Um, I went to see it on Christmas Day with my mum, which was nice and, uh, you know, nice uh, to get out and do that sort of thing. Before I get into the film, though, I thought what was interesting is that um, it seemed like uh, the audience wasn't there as much as uh, the last few times. So the cinema was only half full. Um, there didn't wow. seem to be much of a drive for it. And I had, ta- I happened to have a fortunate or random discussion with some <laughs> cinema staff and they were saying that it was the first two days where it was going nuts and then it just tailed off, okay. which is interesting. So maybe Bit start... Of fatigue. Yeah. Yeah. Star Wars fatigue file. Well, you know, is it 12 films in or, or 11 or however many they've done now? Depends and how you count them, as that's I, right. as so I hear. <laughs> <laughs> or TV shows and whatnot. Um, so I thought that was interesting. But to, as I recall, I think I said something along the lines of For the Last Jedi, the last mm-hmm. film, that I actually really liked it as a film, but I didn't like it as a Star Wars movie. Mm-hmm. And conversely, this time around, I'd say the opposite. So it's an amazing Star Wars movie, but it's not a good film. And uh, just to qualify that I guess is that it, you know the film's got just about everything that you'd want in a Star Wars movie um, so you'll love that part of it but as a film it it's just not shot in a way that um, I mean most people probably don't care because they're want to get their Star Wars fix, but, you know, me being uh, more uh, inclined to, you know, see it as a film sort of thing, it doesn't have those, um, it's like a lot, it's shot like a TV show, you know, a lot of uh, really tight shots, very quick cutting, even when you do get those grand vistas and whatnot, um, that they're cut away from so quickly. And that's why I really appreciated from the last film was that the last film actually, had those like it had good pacing it had good cinematic pacing it had good um uh, visuals etc it's just that what they did with the star wars elements were contentious and possibly not advised well advised shall we say okay and i hear that they uh, solved all that just by blowing them out of the water in this film yeah that's right <laughs> <laughs> retconning the whole thing um i've also got my own issues with how you know jj abrams yeah. does this thing um look the guy is talented but i just find that it's, it's just got that TV vibe to it and mm. he likes to do, it's kind of like an ADHD sort of uh, approach to editing, um, yeah, okay. which I don't really like, but I don't know. Is, um, I don't know, is it, did we say it last time, has it gone too far? Is it the fact that Lucas isn't involved anymore that, you know, what's the point kind of thing or, you know? It's hard to say. I mean, uh, the only thing I've got to add, which I found interesting, is that uh, generally... Everyone feels the same way about Star Wars films. They love them or they hate them for the same sorts of reasons and they, they probably love them and hate them to varying degrees, but, yeah, it's generally fairly uh, uniform. Mm. Uh, all the Star Wars people that I know that have gone to see the film and have seen all 11 or 12 others and whatever other things in the Star Wars multiverse there are, they're really split. Mm. Some love it, some hate this film. And I've never seen that before for any Star Wars film. Yeah. So that's just that's just an interesting point. So maybe that's just a sign that it's gone as far as it can. Yeah. And it's not really, well, there's nowhere left for Star Wars to go. When the fans start loving and hating in equal measures, then we wonder. Yeah. And that's a sample size of uh, five. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I don't know, go out, check it out. I'm sure uh, sure you'll enjoy it. I personally loved uh, The Return of the Emperor in the film because he's po- quite possibly the most evil he's ever been. But that's the thing. Like they, You can tell they brought him back to keep the fans happy and because uh, he's such a beloved character. <laughs> and some of the other... And the way they did some of the story <laughs> arcs and whatever... I guess, you know, would give you some closure somewhat, I guess, even if it all felt kind of rushed in the end. Now, just very quickly then, uh, Princess Leia, did it work or not? Um, It felt a bit token to me, the way that she was inserted, but it wasn't, like, bad. Um, So they found a way to use the old footage to, you know, 
serve a story purpose. Did and she it get did. paid? Well, that's the thing. I don't know. The estate. Um, the kids were happy to allow the footage to be used, I It was guess. shot in the last movie, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two movies ago, Two actually. Two movies ago. So, yeah, yeah I, I don't know. Yeah, so... I didn't. I know that that's that's sort of been a point of contention as well about how well that worked, but I didn't find it offensive. Um, I don't know if I loved it, but uh, maybe that's my whole approach to these things now. <laughs> <laughs> all righty. Um, all right. So as is customary for the last episode of the year, we're just going to go through some of the things we discussed. Um, should actually point out that uh, this is the first time we've been back. Uh, what was the name of this uh, oval again? Well, this is actually uh, Goodwood. Yep. Yeah, so. So we've got a um, couple, we've got a camera behind us, so we'll cut to that, and you'll see uh, some of the vista. And I might actually um, intercut some shots of um, uh, that I'll do a bit later, just some steady cam mm. stuff I picked up a gimbal that I've been oh, mucking really around nice. with, and I might also overlay some shots of Adelaide that I did that I showed you the other day, which um, you know, I highly recommend it if you want to shoot on a phone or something like that. Pick one of these up; it's only a hundred bucks that I picked it up for. And just back in the day when steady cams used oh. to be, you know, the whole body rig, um, and uh, it's just a Amazing that you know you can shoot 4K on one of these things, and uh, it's, it's and incredible. off you go. And and just uh, out of interest, this uh, grandstand will be demolished next month. So so, so yes, so we won't be sitting here again. No, oh, that's a shame. That's a shame because I recall I think one of I think it was our first and second wrap up that we ever did um, on the podcast was actually here. So. Um, there you go. I guess uh, sort, of, sort, sort of full circle or something Histor- like historic that. Moments. Back when we had uh, the full camera rigs and everything. <laughs> all righty. So, all right, we have to talk about Trump briefly now because mm. we did a couple of topics on that. You know, there was the shutdown earlier in the year, um, you know, all the hoopla around the Mueller report. Um, the uh, what else have we got here? And he's still here. He's still here. There's and the impeachment just and, doesn't and seem to be making any sense. Well, I guess, you know, to talk about that, you know, a White House staffer was apparently quoted as saying, like, that was an awesome season three finale. You can't wait to see what happens in season four. <laughs> and that's effectively what this... I mean, we've talked about how it's turned into a reality show, but, you know... <laughs> that's really the way it's going, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But so season four is going to be a cracker because uh, it deals with the re-election as well. Well, that's the thing, like, um, and with the impeachment stuff, Trump wants to drag out um, the the whole thing for as long as possible, which makes sense because, you know, he loves that sort of thing. And that's the thing that I think that these people don't get is that any normal person would be running away from this sort of stuff, but he he just runs straight into it because he knows that the more sensational, the more outrageous it is, the better it works out for him in the long run. It's free campaigning for him, free airtime to campaign. So um, whatever your politics, Democrats really should have thought this one through a little bit better. Mm. So we'll wait with bated breath to see mm-hmm. how it all turns out next year, and I'm sure we'll uh, we'll get to it when uh, when we get to it. There's a couple other things um, that we uh, covered the the Jussie Smollett story um, yeah. and, and all of that. That was uh, quite amusing at the time, and uh, I think just in obviously that was about um, him supposedly staging a um, uh, a beat up of himself so that he could um, you know. What, uh, what else would an actor do? <laughs> <laughs> But, but just more broadly, we were talking actually the other day just about um, uh, how there's like just that different environment around social media and mm. how you handle even personal interactions in your own life and how in the past you would p- maybe potentially just keep it all to yourself. And yet these days, you know, you get people just posting really sensitive stuff about their lives online and then they wonder why they, you know, like if it turns out that they get done in a professional setting or something like that and you wonder what were they thinking when they did it. Look, we've had 10 years now of social media Mm. and I think it would be hard to argue that it's actually done anything positive. Mm. Yep, exactly. Um, So... But for individuals, even for groups, I I don't think... The world has changed and, for the better. And for all the talk that we've had um, in the past about, um, you know, is there going to be some sort of, um, you know, the pendulum swinging the other way, people will learn how to use it because we didn't get a rule book on how to use it. In oh, the don't first worry, place. there are plenty of people out there who know to use it. They're <laughs> just not using it for the right reasons. But what about that idea that it's just that ch- it changes the approach and what you're doing? You're talking about like the, the vegan and vegetarian stuff to the offline the other, other yeah. day too. You know, like, what does it mean to be? one of those things like you either 
literally do it or you just post that you're, um, you know, eating something that, uh, you know, is supposedly vegetarian or vegan well, so that you can show everyone that you're doing it. That's right. So the mm. thing is, is that uh, our world is now littered with good intent, marketing mm. campaigns and uh, timelines. Yep. And you mash them up. So I think any cause now is just a mash up. I don't think it has any of its original meaning. Yeah. So whether it's veganism or even uh, animal rights, they used to mean something completely different to what I see presented yeah. in social media now. And whereas that might have um, been the, the, the bastion of the corporate product mm -hmm. and logo, it seems to have gone to the personal now. Oh, so, so each person ends up establishing their own personal brand online and then you get your Instagram celebrities and YouTube celebrities and whatnot. Who are these real people? Do they, they match their identity with what they're publishing? Or do they just tell or? you they're doing stuff and they're not actually doing it at all? Yeah, exactly. So, so <laughs> ex you know, like, but it sells more of my brand and sells more of my product. And that's what I think is the the, the disturbing thing amongst all uh, all others. Um, oh, we have to mention uh, some Apple stuff. Obviously, Johnny Ive departed Apple this year, so um, you know, oh, it's the end of end of Apple kind of thing. Well, it probably uh, was whether or not he left. <laughs> but <laughs> book it. But I, I thought it was amusing that they bookended it with uh, selling the hundred thousand dollar Mac Pro yeah, at the end, right. and whether or not you know Johnny would have been up for that because you know you Unless can you can open it up. It's not a you know a sealed box like he, I'm sure he would have loved it to be. Oh, well, I think I think <laughs> like the truth is is that if he he was still there, that hundred thousand Mac at least would have been gold plated. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah, and they would have sold the hundred. Yeah, the yeah. hundred. No, I can't even remember the hundred thousand dollar version or the five hundred thousand oh. dollar version that was gold plated because they did the watch that. Uh, that that's that year. right. Yeah, yeah. It's that, but I, look, I, I think uh, to be quite honest, I think Apple's back to where it was uh, mm. before Steve Jobs came back the second time. Mm. Right now, and uh, I don't think for any by a second that they. Certainly better run these days, and they're mm. certainly probably more aware of what their business strategy is. But uh, oh, it, ain't, it ain't what Apple was. Oh, they certainly know um, how to stay solvent, shall we say, compared <laughs> to to where they were then, um, with uh, so much cash in the bank and and whatnot. But what is interesting is um, uh, it, it's like the embedded. Im, Im, Betting of technology in life, so they're uh, an exemplar of it, but they're not the only company doing yeah. it, and it's just infiltrated everything. The fact is, is that you know we're talking about how it was like, well, I guess it would have been seven or eight years ago we were doing apps in this stand right here yeah. that we're doing now. Look, I've got uh, a phone there, I've got a phone there, I've got a phone here, um, USB mic, a laptop, and an iPad. Whereas back in the day, it was full tripods um, that we had to put that on a on a, its own tripod as well um, and uh, and it was the camera recording tape yeah. you know like the fact is, is that any of us can do any of this stuff and it's all in 4k and it's all um, amazing so um, we are lucky for that much yeah so the, <laughs> so the media production certainly gone through the roof exactly exactly <laughs> the quality of the content maybe not yeah that's right all right well um, maybe uh, with so much more we could talk about I mean you know predictions and whatnot it's hard to tell these days anymore I mean we got 2020 coming up, you know. Um, brand new decade. Yep. And uh, how many times have we been at a brand new decade and mm. how things have been, you know. Um, uh, who knows what will happen. It would seem that um, at least tech-wise we've sort of plateaued and there might be uh, the next big thing will be whatever the next big thing is. Um, and that might come sooner rather than later. Um, that Who knows. Well, we have seen the foldable phone, uh, you know, we've seen... A they lot had to be returned, yeah. They, well, they had to be returned, <laughs> but I mean, that's going to make a comeback in the, in, in the 20s. But I think that, uh, I think the big, next big tech revolution will occur after the next US federal election. Mm. And I think we'll see, uh, whatever the outcome is, uh, I think we'll see some very uh, strict um, uh, regulations around social media. Yeah, absolutely. 
All right, we might um, might wrap it up there. I think um, we uh, had a bit to talk about. Um, we've uh, gone past 150 episodes this year, which is good. Hopefully, maybe we'll, we'll get closer to um, eclipsing our previous podcast next year by the end of next year, or maybe even crack 200 by next year. Who knows? Who knows? Um, but um, it's good that we can uh, sort of keep doing it relatively painlessly, really. Um, given the again Thanks referring to, to that tech again, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Technology does make it easy. Yeah, absolutely. All right, we'll wrap it up there. So um, don't forget our website, SciTechCulture.com. You can get all of our links and content there. You can subscribe to our YouTube Vimeo channels, RSS feeds, etc., and listen to us, watch us on any device that you like, really, wherever you That's happen right. to be in the world. So another good year, Steve. Um, good to do it in person, as always. Um, good that we've got such a nice day and looking at this vista. We'll, I'll, I'll make sure I get some edited shots in there for, uh, for people to see while we've talking through this podcast but um hope you have a a great uh, new year and we'll see you again in 2020